<laughs> I'm so full I forgot my bag. <sighs> everyone coming back at you with a food video today I'm always down to eat so in this video you'll be seeing me eat a lot of ramen we're at the Shin Yokohama Ramen Museum and I'm so excited to show you what's inside my name is Hannah and this is what you Hannah do ramen museum Woo! what you Hannah do what you Hannah do when they come for you the Shin Yokohama Ramen Museum is located in Yokohama and is around an hour away from Tokyo Station. This museum was founded in 1994 as the world's first food-themed amusement park. There aren't really any rides inside, but it's built in a way that would transport you to a whole different time. Konnichiwa. Hi. Oh, arigatouzaimasu. They offer English brochures. There are six ramen shops inside, plus they offer small sizes so you can sample different types of ramen. The tickets cost 380 yen per person, and the rule is that you are expected to order at least one bowl of ramen inside. And that's no biggie for me! Ooh, so we got our tickets, let's go in! Wow. Okay guys, this is the first floor of the ramen museum. Super exciting. Okay, so here they have an infographic of what ramen is. So to give you a brief history of ramen, ramen is actually from China and the Japanese really loved it, they adapted it and made it their own. So here they say, what is the difference between ramen and Chinese noodle dishes? The difference mainly is the soup. So actually, the soup for Chinese ramen can be used for other dishes, but for Japanese ramen, it's specifically made only for ramen. So it's made with ramen in mind only. So unlimited ramen recipes with a combination of five elements. So these are the main five elements of ramen so first you have your broth which is like the umami flavor the soup itself and then for seasoning you have like shio or salt shoyu miso and then for noodles there are different types of noodles which i'll get to later and then for toppings they usually have chashu or seasoned roasted pork they have green onions they have menma or bamboo shoots uh, nori, seaweed, but now there are so many different types of variations all over the world and the oil. Those five make up what's important in any ramen bowl. Ooh. So this is actually perfect guys. So here they have the general classification by seasoning. So like I was telling you earlier, the broth is really important. And then they add on these basic seasonings. So these are actually the most basic types of ramen. So they have the salt base, which is the oldest type of ramen. So this is shio or salt base. Then they have soy sauce base or shoyu ramen. And then miso and then tonkotsu. And then of course it evolved and then they have their own variations now. Tonkotsu shoyu ramen, miso tonkotsu, kind of like mixing everything. And then they have different types of soup now as well. So they have thick chicken ramen, rich fish ramen, vegetable ramen. For all you vegetarians out there, they have this. And for me personally, I really love rich fish ramen. And usually people's image of ramen is this. But actually, it has evolved even more and there are different types of ramen. So here we have tukemen or dipping ramen. This is actually my favorite ramen type in the whole world. So dipping ramen, uh, maze ramen. Uh, this doesn't normally come with soup and then you mix it all together. Maze is like mixing and mixing it together. And then you have summer ramen or hayashi ramen. This is actually uh, served cold for summer because it gets really hot in Japan. Speaking of local ramens and different variations of ramen, they have a ramen map here, which is really cool. So right behind, that's the map of Japan. And there are different types of ramen depending on which part of Japan you are in. 
So west part of Kyushu, they have tonkotsu ramen. If you haven't seen my video of when we were in Hakata, I'll put a link somewhere there on the screen, but they have the pork bone broth style ramen. And then went all the way up to Fukushima, they have a kitakata ramen, which is made out of noodle called hirauchi noodle, which is kind of like flat, wide, and curled. And then all the way to Hokkaido up there. They also have regional ramen in Japan, and you can oh, touch the ramen to read more. So I'm actually curious about this one. Ooh, this is katsura tantanmen. They have noodle thickness right here. Broth thickness, ooh, really thick broth. Ooh, this one looks pretty interesting. And I think this is a rare one. This is like a black ramen and it's Toyama ramen. Broth thickness is at five stars. Very interesting, it's quite popular, rare to find. And since we are in Yokohama, let's check out Yokohama's ramen. And this is a tonkotsu shoyu, so it's pork broth and soy sauce. But maybe we'll get to try some of that today. So hopefully this map will help you find your, I don't know, something that you really want to try in the future. I'm not sure what I want to try, but definitely somewhere in Hokkaido for me. But you guys don't have to go to all those places in Japan to try the different types of ramen. You'll find most of it in Tokyo too. And right behind the regional map, they have the ramen museum shop. They have lots of stuff. They even have ramen bowls that you can find. And look, they have a hundred different types of instant ramen. So in case you guys want to try some of that, bring it home to your countries, you can go and have that too. Ooh, here they also have a ramen yatai or like a ramen stand. So this is how the old ramen stands used to look in old Japan. I guess that's where they put the soup and that's where they cook the ramen, you strain it, they give it to you. <laughs> Here's a happy guy. This is Uncle Charumera. <laughs> they also have this experience zone. Ooh, they have different types of bowls, ramen bowls. Just pretty nice. Ooh, I don't remember this being here before. Whoa. <laughs> oh, and actually, guys, if you want to really experience how to make ramen and ramen noodles, you just need to make a reservation and you can do it. You can experience that rolling it out with a bamboo. Oh, cool. They also have a place where you can learn about the full history of ramen from 1488 all the way to present day Japan. They even have a section talking about ramen and black markets. So if you have a lot of time and love history, read away. It's actually quite interesting. When was the first time <laughs> for you to eat ramen? Eat ramen? remember anymore <laughs> but this is my favorite <laughs> and now they even give michelin stars to ramen shops ramen has now gone global that was what was on the first floor and now we're going to go to the basement where it's actually pretty cool Check this out. It's a little ramen city. The production design of this place is amazing. Wow. There are two floors in this area and the floor you get to first has an alleyway that goes around the ramen city below and it takes you back to 1958 Japan. They have a lot of cool stuff that would make you feel like you were transported back to that era. They even have this cute sweet shop with goodies you can buy from that time. Cute! <laughs> the 
These look old. Love it. Oh my god. If you guys haven't watched this film, you will cry. <laughs> I saw a lot of people taking photos around this area too. Look at these other stuff. Guys, it's in the details. So I've talked a lot about this museum. Shall we eat? I want to try everything. My tummy is ready! First up, we have Raidaiken. Raidaiken is said to be the first ever ramen shop opened in Japan and it was located in Asakusa, Tokyo. We wanted to try this first since we wanted to taste the flavor of the first ever Japanese ramen shop in Japan. Ooh, so this is not from 1958, but this is how you order ramen. They have different languages so you don't have to worry so much. So of course, I'll choose English. Okay. Okay, so here we have small bowls and as well as regular bowls. Okay, since I want to try a lot of the restaurants here, I'm just going to choose a small bowl. So small. Then you're going to click purchase. Please insert money. Please wait. The ticket is now printing. Please take your ticket and change. You got the tickets? We're going to eat soon. Okay, we finally have a seat. Uh, we didn't wait too long, but woo, excited to have my first bowl of ramen here in Ramen Museum. And this is the original shoyu-based ramen. Shoyu is soy sauce, and it's the mini bowl. It's a small size, perfect for now, and then we get to try the next ones. So without further ado, itadakimasu. Try the soup first. Mm, very simple flavors, light on the tongue. It's quite nice for the first bowl. It's not too thick. Noodles, which is your normal straight noodles. Mm, perfect firmness, goes so well with the soup. I don't normally eat pork, but I'm gonna give the chashu a bite. Mm. Not the best I've had, but pretty good. We have the memma or bamboo shoots. Tastes like your standard bamboo shoot. I really do love the broth. It's very simple and flavorful. Next, we wanted to have something simple again before going into the thicker soups. So we decided to go to Ryukyu Shimentondo, a popular ramen restaurant based in Okinawa, Japan. For our second bowl, we have the Shio ramen, which is originally from Okinawa. So the soup is very light and simple. Let's give the soup a try first. Itadakimasu. Mm. Okay, so I wasn't expecting that at all. It's very light, but it's packed full of flavor. Delicious. Let's try the noodles. The noodles are thin, straight noodles. Pretty good. They also have like these little dried garlic flakes. And I'm a big fan of garlic, so yum. The soup is a little oily, but it's not overwhelmingly oily. So right now I'm trying his ramen. If mine was the basic one, his is like an older recipe basic one. The soup looks kind of similar, but let me let me give it a try. Mm. This is different. I would say this one has more umami flavor. This definitely has a more seafood taste to it. Ooh, if I were to decide which one's better, I can't really choose. They're both quite good and packed with flavor. Two bowls down. 
Now on to the thicker broths. We went to Komurasaki, a tonkotsu specialty ramen shop based from Kumamoto in Kyushu. Our third bowl. Let's go. Ramen, vegetable. Oh, they have a vegetable. And so for vegetarians, you can go and try that. We want to go with just the basic honkotsu ramen. And then that's it. Okay, next we have this tonkotsu bowl, which is a pork bone broth. And fun fact, pork bone broth was actually discovered by accident. So they had overboiled some pork bones and then it became this milky soup. And when they tried it, it was, wow, it's actually pretty good. I'm super excited to try this out. I'm not the biggest fan of tonkotsu ramen because I don't like thick soup ramen. But let's give it a try. Itadakimasu. Mm, pretty good. Not bad, not bad at all. I wasn't saying much in the video because I was so focused on eating, but this bowl was surprisingly pleasant enough for me to enjoy. It wasn't too fatty or porky at all. Verdict. I like it, folks. The chashu had a very peppery flavor to it, which gave it a really nice kick opposite the soup. Ooh, I like how the pork of this was, was seasoned. We had um, kikurage. This type of seaweed. Mm. Mm. Love the texture. My hair is getting in the way of my food. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it as much as I did, but it was good. Three bowls down. At this point, I was already around 75% full. But we needed to try the miso ramen too, right? So after walking and looking around a bit to make some space for the next ramen bowl, we headed to Ryu Shanghai Honten. Their specialty is their spicy miso thick soup ramen, and their noodles are wrinkled, probably to help carry that thick soup with it. Okay, this is our fourth bowl. Last but not least, we have this spicy miso ramen. And the noodles are a lot thicker than the ones that we've tried before this. This is going to be my last bowl. I don't think I can eat more than this. I've always loved miso ramen. So I'm looking forward to having this. Itadakimasu. Mm. I haven't had this kind of miso ramen before. It's definitely very thick and very oily. Mm. Because the noodles are thicker, definitely has more of a bite. Mm. Not entirely sure how I feel about this. It's still good, but not the miso ramen that I had in my mind. So it is quite spicy. It's not super spicy, but just enough to enhance the flavor. Honestly, wasn't a big fan when I first tried it, but the more I eat it, the more I start to like it a little bit more. Let's try the Naruto. Fish cake. And finally, one last. I'm full. I'm so stuffed right now. I can't believe how much I ate today. We wanted to try all six restaurants that are in here, but I'm tapping out. No more. <laughs> So that's it. This is definitely a very cool, fun place to go to if you don't know much about ramen yet. If you want to start your journey or you don't know where to go or what kind of ramen to try, definitely go to this place to try out all the different restaurants since they have the small bowls so that you can you know, figure out which one you like the best and then maybe venture out into the rest of Japan for which ramen you'd like. For me, I think it was the very first restaurant that we went to that I, can, that I really liked. Overall, I enjoyed this whole experience. Experience and I recommend coming here if you haven't. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, click like down below. And if you want to see more content about Japan, you know what to do. So until next time, Janet, and see you in the next video. Woo!